Good morning friends, we are back with the fourth lecture for week number 3 where we are talking about the application of digital techniques in mechanical measurement. In fact, I am telling good morning because I am recording this video in a very cold and uh, wet morning at Guwahati, but uh, you may be seeing this one at some other time. So, please alter the initial uh, introduction that way. Means it's now, in the earlier three lectures, we have mostly covered all the relevant topics apart from only one which is left for today's discussion. We have discussed about the number system, we have discussed about the importance of digital transmission over analog transmission, we have discussed about why binary is generally preferred over other uh, number systems like decimal, octal or hexadecimal. And then we have seen the use of logic gates and their combinations to uh, transmit the data or to modify the binary data. And in the last lecture, where we have discussed about different methods of converting an analog signal to its digital counterpart. Today we shall be discussing the other of that, other version or the other extreme of that, that is converting the digital signal to its analog counterpart. Uh, but before that, like we always keep on doing, let us do a little bit of exercise based upon what we have already discussed in the previous lecture. So, in the previous lecture, we have discussed about converting an analog signal to digital signal using different kinds of devices. We have talked about the digital ramp ADC, the uh, integration based ADC single slope or double slope, successive approximation ADC, sigma delta ADC and also the flash ADC, uh, each of them having their own advantages and disadvantages. Uh, let us uh, take one example of an analog signal and see how we can convert this to a digital signal or what will be the corresponding digital signal. One thing you must keep in mind, uh, it does not matter what kind of uh, conversion system or what kind of ADCs you are using, as long as the resolution of the instrument is same, the analog output should also, sorry, the digital output corresponding to the analog input should also be the same. Let us say we are dealing with a device which is having a voltage range of 0 to 10 volt and it is a 4 bit device. That is that means whatever analog input you provide within this range of 0 to 10 volt that will be represented by a 4 bit binary number. That is a binary number which can comprise of 4 digits. This is the way you represent the bits where the first one corresponds to the least significant bit or 2 to the power 0, then this is 2 to the power 1, this corresponds to 2 square, this corresponds to 2 cube. Here this one is the least significant bit this one is the most significant bit. So, it does not matter, I repeat, what kind of device you are using, uh, but you should get the same binary output. Then, uh, let us say the input that we are providing is 3.187 volt, um, somewhat randomly have chosen a value, then what should be the digital counterpart corresponding to this, that we have to identify. So, first can you decide what is the resolution of your converter? If range is 0 to 10 volt, that is maximum voltage can be 10, minimum voltage is 0, it is 4 bit. 4 bit means how many total number of levels it can have? It can have 2 to the power 4, that is total 16 level, that is starting from 0 to 15, these are the different levels it can have. And we have to identify uh, this uh, input value of 3.187 falls in which one. Then accordingly we can get its digital counterpart. Uh, the, the, now, the resolution of this one Q should be the maximum voltage minus minimum voltage divided by 2 to the power 4 uh, that is 10 divided by 16 which is 0 0.625 volt. So, width of each such level should be 0. Point, sorry, 0 0.625 volt and uh, then we have to identify exactly where it should fall, there are uh, we can identify it in say very crude way or we can go in more systematic pattern. Crude way means let us say the first level correspond to level 0, what should be the voltage corresponding to this? It should be 0 to 0 0.625 volt, then level 1 corresponds to 0.625 uh, to the double of this one that is 1.25 volt, level 2 should be 1.25 to 1.25. 875 volt, then level 3 it should be 1.875 to 
2.5 volt level 4 it should be 2.5 to 3.125 volt note each of them is having a width of 0.625 volt so according to starting from 0 we just have to keep on adding this 0.625 and we can identify the uh, starting and finishing point of each of these levels now come to level 5 it is starting from 3.125 and it is uh, going up to 3.75 volt and our objective is 3.187 which falls right here that means uh, it should belong to the level number 5 then we can identify the binary value corresponding to this 5 digital value or decimal value and that should be a binary output so what is the binary correspondence to 5 5 divided by 2 we are getting 2 left 1 then divide uh, 2 by this we are left with 1 remainder is 0 then divide to 1 by 2 you are getting 0 to 1 and to get the 4 bit representation add another 0 so this should be the binary value that means uh, you should get 0 1 0 1 as the output for this however this is a very crude way of calculating if we think about any particular kind of converter any particular kind of DSC then how can we achieve this the one that we have uh, done here that is somehow or somewhat that is the way the digital ramp one goes off that is it keeps on uh, changing the binary value by a free running binary counter and then it keeps and uh, compares the corresponding uh, output voltage with the actual input and uh, then gives a uh, then uh, finally settles to a particular value like if this conversion we are getting using a dynamic ram converter then it should be starting from 0000, 0, 0, 0 and whatever is the corresponding voltage it will compare with this it is not matching this is smaller so it will change the least significant bit it is still not matching then it will go to the next one which is this then the next one which basically it is our level number 0 this is our level number 1 this is level number 2 this is level number 3 whenever it is getting one binary number from its register it is converting this digital value to the analog value and comparing that analog value to the actual input which is this one as long as this uh, the output from the anal digital to analog converted value is less than the actual input it will keep on changing so uh, next value should be 0 1 0 0 which corresponds to level number 4 it is still not matching then it changes this reaches level number 5 and now it gets a value basically the value corresponding to this one will be coming to be uh, within the range of this 3.187 volt or rather I should say the 3.187 volt will come within this range and so it will settle this to this value this is how a dynamic ramp one goes on whereas if we think about a successive approximation DSC or ADC successive approximation ADC then how it works it starts from the most significant bit whereas here we are starting from the least significant bit here we shall be starting from the most significant bit so the most significant bit will be set as 1 others will be set as 0 or uh, let me do this way let us say this is your register this is the most significant bit this is the least significant bit sometimes this is called the second significant bit this is called the third significant bit but not that much important these terms the MSB and LSB are more important so initially all of them are set to 0 now the when the process conversion process starts the register will convert the value of MSB uh, to 1 or set it to 1 then 1 triple naught corresponding to 1 triple naught what should be the value the corresponding value is 5 volt now this is greater than this 3.187 so this is not possible so this goes back to 0 the MSB is settled now it changes this second one to 1 uh, what is the corresponding output value corresponding output output value should be you know the resolution so corresponding value should be 2.5 volt I hope you know how to calculate the voltage corresponding to this now this 2.5 volt is coming to be less than 3.187 that means this is a correct one so we settle this one this is settled 
Now we move to the third one and the register set this to 1. Now what should be your output value? Your output is now from the first significant bit it is 0 into 5 volt or rather the most significant bit plus now the second one is uh, finalized to 1. So into 2.5 plus the 1 in the third which we have just set into 1.25 plus the last one 0.625. So, we are getting this to be 2.5 plus 1.25 uh, that is 3.75 and this 3.75 is found to be greater than 3.187. So, this is also not correct. So, this goes off and the register sets this one back to 0. This is also final. So, we have already got 3 digits or 3 bits. Now, go to the least significant one set this to 1. Then what is the uh, value corresponding to this? The output voltage like corresponding to this binary uh, representation corresponding digital to analog converter will give you 0 into 5 volt plus 1 into 2.5 volt plus 0 into 1.25 volt and finally 1 into 0.625 volt which should be uh, 3.125. 2.5 plus 0.625 is 3.125 and this is coming to be less than 3.187. So, it will continue this value giving a final output as 0101 which is essentially the same as this one. So, uh, this is the way a uh, digital RAM converter works, this is the way a successive approximation converter works and uh, we can they should give the same value. However, instead of uh, having the same resolution if one of them is having say this 4 bit resolution and this one is having a 3 bit resolution definitely corresponding outputs may be different because uh, here it will be using 4 binary digits whereas this one will be using 3 binary digits. But if the resolution is same the voltage ranges are same or I should say the number of bits and voltage ranges are same then corresponding binary output has to be exactly the same. Now, let us move to the topic of our discussion for the day which is digital to analog conversion. In uh, digital to analog conversion, we have a binary input which gets converted to an analog signal output generally in the form of a voltage. So, the application of such device is uh, probably more than the analog to digital converter because uh, in most of the cases when you want to store some analog signal we convert that to digital cases and we store it or transmit it for the corresponding uh, advantages. However, quite often we want the final representation final output in analog form itself. Therefore, whatever binary data we have stored or we have processed or we have uh, analyzed that needs to be converted back to the analog form and then we can get the final output from this. Just uh, think about one application, a very common application of a telephone receiver. When we are talking like here the sound wave that is coming out, uh, this sound wave gets converted in the microphone uh, to an analog form or sorry this analog sound wave or analog signal gets the sound signal gets converted to a digital form and this digital form that gets transmitted through the wires or through whatever means like in case of mobile phones they get transmitted via wireless connections and they goes back to the or they goes to the destination where they are supposed to reach. Now, there in the handset the digital signal gets converted back to analog and we get, we get the sound wave back the analog sound wave and so the recipient is able to hear the sound. Basically the telephone receivers or the mobile phone receivers that we have they are uh, they can do the both means they can convert the sound wave to the digital form thereby facilitating the analog to digital conversion and similarly when they we are receiving a call or when we are rather I should say when you are uh, hearing the sound of the person other end of the phone then it is converting the digital signal to the analog sound wave so that we can hear what they are saying. This way there are several kind of applications probably infinite number of applications of digital to analog conversion. So, the digital to analog converters or the DSEs their primary objective is to convert a binary number into voltage proportional to its value. Uh, the voltage will be uh, the voltage we can use some suitable calibration to get the actual output that we are looking for. So, 
each of the binary digits should have a corresponding uh, voltage value associated with this. Like say if we are talking about a binary representation with these digits like shown here, then the first one if that is representing 0, then whatever distance we have between the first and the second one, similarly the same uh, distance we should have between the next two and again the same distance we should have between the next two. So, this way uh, each of them gives a finite value of the voltage and the objective or the entire working procedure of this DSE is based upon assigning the suitable voltage or give the suitable voltage output corresponding to whatever binary number that you are giving. There are several properties of importance to DSE, but most of you are already known to you. Uh, firstly, when they are from our discussion of the first chapter, first module where we have learned about different properties of measurement systems and also uh, in this week itself when we have discussed about different terms associated with the analog to digital conversion, uh, more or less similar properties are also relevant to DSEs. First is definitely resolution. Resolution refers to the smallest analog increment corresponding to one bit change in the digital input. Like if there is a small one bit change uh, generally in the least significant bit position, whatever change in the final output that we get that is what we refer as resolution. And quite similar to the uh, analog to digital converters, here also it is set to be the voltage associated to the V of the least significant bit or you can say the reference voltage divided by 2 to the power n, where n refers to the number of bit. Like if the reference voltage is set to be 10 volt and you are talking about a 4 bit converter, then it will be 10 volt by 2 to the power 4 that is 0.625 volt. That is the same way we calculate for uh, ADCs. So, uh, the it is always be desirable to have higher resolution like any uh, measurement device, we always want higher resolution that means with the smallest possible change in the input, we want larger change in the output that is what the basic definition of resolution is uh, and uh, the same is applicable here also when you have uh, larger resolution, we always uh, prefer to go for that device. Like just see this example, here our analog uh, desirable analog signal is something like a parabolic curve. This is the desirable analog, analog signal or analog output which we are looking for. But as we are using a uh, 1 bit converter, then it can have only two, two levels 0 and 1 because it is a 1 bit converter. So, it can have maximum 2 to the power 1 that is two levels which are 0 and 1 and therefore, it is giving a representation just like this either 0 at one position or 1 at the other position and all values are represented either by this. Whereas, the same thing if we represent by a 3 bit converter, 3 bit means we can have 2 to the power 3 that is total 8 number of levels starting from 0 to 7 or if we write in binary format, we can have 0 0 0 to up to 1 1 1 and uh, so many levels we have um, available with us accordingly it can give a much better representation just like this. So, yes, 0, 0, 0 is the lowest position, 1, 1, 1 is the highest position and in between we are still having 6 more levels. So, it is a much better representation that we are going to get. So, it is always better to go for a high resolution converter, but there are practical problems as well. Then the reference voltage, the reference voltage which we have already used for calculating the resolution, it itself is a uh, term of importance because it is a specified voltage which determines the magnitude of the resolution itself. Uh, it determines how much uh, each, how much voltage we are going to assign to each digital level. So, higher the value of V reference, definitely higher will be the resolution uh, and reference voltage can be of two types. One can be the non-multiplier type which are internal to the device set by the manufacturer itself and user is not able to change it. Other is the multiplier type where the user can set the reference voltage by using some external uh, voltage source and therefore, uh, it can be made to be variable which is not possible in non-multiplier type. Another property of importance is the settling time. Settling time refers to the time required by the converter to settled within a specified band around the uh, actual output and this band width of the band generally is equal to the resolution itself and therefore, uh, the band can be specified something like plus minus q by 2 just like this. Here uh, this one this line represents the expected output. However, 
Big, uh, during, depending on the way your convert is working, we are getting a curvilinear representation where initially there is a large overshoot and then that gradually decreases to get settled within this band. So, we can allow a maximum of plus minus q by 2 amount of error and once this term gets settled like if you look say this is the point uh, beyond after that uh, the uh, value output value is always within that plus minus q by 2 range and so this is what we refer to as a settling time. So, to uh, note the reading or output value from your converter we must be aware about the settling time because that is a minimum amount of time we have to provide to your, our instrument before finalizing or before noting the final reading. Next property of importance is the linearity uh, like any st measuring instrument we always expect uh, a linear behavior that is with the whatever change in the input is taking place propor proportionate amount of change in output should also take place. So, linearity refers to the difference between the desired analog output and the expected output over the full range like see this is the case this is the most ideal scenario as the input is uh, changing continuously for, uh, uh, or corresponding output is also changing and the midpoints of all these intervals can be joined by a straight line this is the desirable scenario but this is what we may get in practice like uh, there can be some quite random variation non-linear representation of this output this can lead to severe amount of error in the final reading and the speed or conversion rate is always of importance which refers to the rate at which the digital input gets converted to the analog output. Uh, it depends on the clock of the input signal itself and also the settling time. Like larger the settling time definitely uh, it will be able to give you reading within a lesser period of time, but again that affects the accuracy. So, each of them uh, needs to be considered while designing a DSC and uh, still um, by we can have several kinds of errors like we can have error associated to the gain of the instrument gain refers to like uh, the gain error refers to the change in the ratio of output to input with time whereas offset refers to if there is a fixed amount of distance maintained between the expected output and the actual output over a long period of time when this gain and offset comes together then we get the full scale. Uh, I am not going into the detail of this because these terms already you know in the very first week itself we have discussed about these kinds of errors. Uh, the result gain refer the gain error or corresponding uh, slope related error we have discussed in detail we know how to calculate that for a general instrument also. It is just the same thing, but it is digital to analog conversion version that resolution uh, we have already seen how resolution can give erroneous results non-linearity the example again we can see here itself the example of non-linearity error. Non-monotonic is somewhat similar to this non-linearity and overshoot this is what we refer to as the overshoot because this is your desired level, but over this entire span the output is greater than the actual input or actual expected output I should say. So, this is what we refer as the overshoot. So, large overshoot can severely hamper the working principle of the instrument and even cause permanent damage to that one also. So, these are certain properties which uh, are of interest related to the digital to analog conversion. Uh, there are quite a few kinds of uh, conver such converters, but here we shall be discussing only two of them which are the most popular one and also the most important ones. The first one is called the binary weighted register. In case of a binary weighted register, we have a series of registers each connected to one bit of the binary input. That means, if there are have you are having n number of binary sorry if your instrument is of n bits then we are also going to have n number of registers, but um, these registers are not equal rather they follow a particular pattern. Like the register connected to the most significant bit if the value of that one is r then the one connected to the next one its value will be double of that that is 2 r the next one will be having a value of 4 r and this way it will keep on going. So, we have a network of n number of switches, uh, these switches are controlled by the binary input of the corresponding bit. Like say for the most significant bit, when your most significant bit is equal to 1, then this switch is closed or um, this switch connects this particular portion. So, it is in contact with the voltage source. However, when your most significant bit goes to 0, then the switch contacts this grounded portion 
so no current flow through this. Then the weighted register of ladder network that we have here, every resistance is inversely proportional to the numerical significance of corresponding binary digit, just what I mentioned. Like for the most significant bit it is R, then it keeps on becoming double of the immediately neighboring one as we keep on going across the bits. Then what will be the register corresponding to the least significant bit? Then uh, the first one is R, the next one, first one which is associated with B n position is R, then the one associated with B n minus 1 position is 2 R. So, we can write this to be 2 to the power 0 R, this to be 2 to the power 1 R, then the one associated with B n minus 2 position is 2 square R. So, this way if you keep on going, the one associated with B 1 position, what should be the value of this? Let us see quickly. The it should be 2 to the power n minus 2 into r if we keep on following this pattern because uh, instead of writing this to be 2 to the power 0, we can write this to be 2 to the power n minus n. Similarly, we can write this to be 2 to the power n minus n minus 1 and the same we are writing for all of them and the final one. So, this way you can keep on writing the registers for all of them, this is what we have here. So, the total current that will be flowing through this entire circuit should depend on the reference voltage divided by corresponding R and the value of the switches. This B values refers to the value of the bit, if the bit is 1, then this you will be getting current as V rep by R, whereas if B is 0, there will be no current flowing through this and same for each of the registers. So, we sum them up starting from B n minus 1 going to B naught, actually I made a mistake while writing this. So, the most significant bit we refer as B n minus 1 corresponding register is R or 2 to the power 0 R. Then we can write this to be 2 to the power n minus n minus 1 plus 1 something like this or rather minus 1 just to make it 0. Then the 1 in the next bit, bit 2 to the power n b n minus 2, its value is 2 to the power 1 r. Then we can write this to be 2 to the power n minus its position n minus 2 r minus 1. So, the 1 in the ith position, then what we should write? The corresponding register should be, should be 2 to the power n minus i minus 1 into r. This should be the corresponding register. This is exactly what we have written here and uh, each of them is having corresponding resistance. The magnitude of resistance keeps on changing as we move from most significant bit to the least significant bit. The one connected to the least significant bit is the highest resistor. Then this is the total current. Then how much will be the uh, voltage at the output? This should be this current multiplied with this, this RF. So, it is I into RF and we have the expression for this. Let us, uh, uh, so the full scale output current will be possible when your all the bits are having one, like if you are dealing with a 4 bit register or rather 4 bit converter, then if all of them are one, then you will be going to get the maximum current which we refer as the full scale. Similarly, when all are 0, then no current will be flowing through this, output voltage also will be equal to 0. Uh, let us take the example of this particular register. In uh, this particular register, we are dealing with a 4 bit converter. So, 4 bit means first one you having register R, second one is having 2 R or you can say 2 to the power 1 R, then next one is 2 square R and third one is 2 cube R which is connected to the least significant bit, this one. V ref amount of voltage has been applied and R f this register is taken to be equal to R. Then what is the current that is flowing through this? It is very easy, you can calculate to be V rep by R into B3 uh, as we have taken R outside. So, B3 plus B2 upon 2 plus B1 upon R, B1 upon 4 plus B0 upon 8, where B0 refers to the least significant bit, B3 refers to the most significant bit. And then output voltage will be RF times of this and as RF is equal to R, we get this. So, therefore, uh, say we are dealing with a situation where your binary input is 1011. Then how much will be your output voltage? Your output voltage will be equal to V ref into R f upon R 
into 1 corresponding to B3 plus 0 corresponding to B2 plus 1 corresponding to B1 plus 1 corresponding to B0 that is V ref into R f upon R and then if we add all of them together we have 8 plus 2 plus 1 that is 11 by 8 V ref into R f upon R. So, this now by changing the value of this V ref, R f and R or I should say the ratio of this R f upon R and also the magnitude of V ref, we can get any desired level of this V out. This, this situation where R f is equal to R by 2, we get this value. So, by just modifying the value of R f by R ratio and the value of this reference voltage, we can produce any level of output voltage corresponding to a given digital one. So, the biggest advantage of this structure is it is a very simple easy to understand structure, it is an economical construction from design point of view and also easy to analyze and quite fast conversion because as all of them are working parallelly, so it is very, very fast. Uh, but it involves a large number of registers, particularly when we are dealing with a high, higher bit one then quite difficult to maintain the precision and accuracy level and the, also the stability of the lower registers. Like suppose if you are dealing with a 16 bit converter, then if the one associated with the most significant bit is R, the one associated with the least significant bit is 2 to the power 15 times of this R, which is an humongous value. Even if your R is small, this one is an extremely large register that you are talking about. So, it is uh, quite it becomes quite difficult to handle with them. Another problem happens actually all these problems are associated with the presence of so many number of registers. Now, if you are uh, doing or uh, dealing with an application which uh, is associated with uh, substantial change in its temperature, then uh, it will be very difficult to match the temperature coefficient of all these registers because you know that resistance of a resistor changes with temperature and um, it will be very difficult to get so many registers with identical value of the temperature coefficient of resistivity and uh, therefore, they may lead to erroneous results particularly at higher temperatures. Then uh, we require low switch impedance can be expensive at higher resolution just because of the precision related issue with lower resistors and also when you are dealing with a uh, resistance very, very large resistance corresponding to LSB like just the situation we are talking about there this resistance itself may be uh, somewhat similar to or maybe even larger than the input resistance of the amplifier itself and uh, therefore, that will lead to significant amount of error in the final result. So, as long as we are dealing with low number of bits then it is fine, it is an excellent uh, kind of converter, it is uh, quite accurate give very very fast conversion, however, as the number of bits keeps on increasing, it becomes quite difficult to handle. Let us solve one problem on this. Here we are our problem corresponds to an 8 bit DAC uh, just shown here, this is the least significant bit having register R naught, this is the most significant one having register R. So, it is R, the next one will be having 2 R, this way the least significant bit is having 2 to the power 7 times of R. Here it is given that this V R the reference voltage is equal to 5 volt, then what is the smallest value of R uh, that we can allow which will provide you uh, which can limit the current drawn from the source to 10 milli ampere. This is a fabrication related problem that is it is said to the manufacturer that we have to limit the current to 10 milli ampere the maximum current that may appear in the system and so accordingly he has to choose the value of this registers. Now, how can he proceed? The maximum value of the register, uh, how can uh, he select this? This is an 8 bit DSC. So, what is the maximum uh, binary input that it can have? The maximum will be the one when all the 8 bits are having 1 in it. So, this is the largest possible input that it can have. So, how much is the current corresponding to this? The current corresponding to this will be Vr divided by R into 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 square plus dot plus 1 by 2 to the power 6 plus 1 by 2 to the power 7 where R by 2, uh, 2 to the power 7 R is the register for this least significant bit or if we 
take just for ease of calculation if we take 2 to the power 7 out of this then we have 2 to the power 7 plus 2 to the power 6 plus uh, 2 and 2 to the power 0 that is 1 here. So, how much should be the value of this? This is just like a geometric progression is not it where the starting value of the smallest value is 1 and they are having a ratio of 2 the neighboring values. So, if we calculate properly then this comes here by 2 to the power 7 r and this entire thing will be coming to the 2 to the power 8 minus 1 by 2 minus 1. So, like this and so we have 2 to the power 8 is 256 minus 1. So, it is 255 by 2 to the power 7 is 128 into V r by r. So, that is the expression from the for the current when all the bits are switched on. Uh, now, in this problem it is given that this i is equal to 10 milli ampere in the extreme situation that is 10 into 10 to the power minus 3 ampere. So, if we um, rewrite this expression then the r the smallest value of r r mean I should say this was i max. So, r mean should be 255 by 128 into v r divided by i max. So, we put the numbers here 255 by 128 into your v r is given as 5 volt and i max is given as 10 into 10 to the power minus 3. So, we have to calculate the value and I actually have pre calculated the number. So, it is coming as 996.09 ohm. So, this is the smallest value of resistance that we can put in practically we would always like to put in a resistance value higher than this. So, this way we can uh, do calculations about the design parameters how to decide the value of resistor or even how to decide the value of the voltage. Let us extend this problem a bit. Next problem is if R f is equal to R what is the resolution of this DAC? Uh, we this particular R f is given to be equal to R. Now, we have to calculate the res resolution of this DAC. How can you calculate the resolution? What the resolution refers to? The resolution refers to the change in the final output with the smallest possible change in the input. Now, what can be the smallest possible change? Think about what is the smallest possible input or so rather, rather I should say what is the smallest value of output you can get that is 0 and it should correspond to which input? It should correspond to the input of all zeros. So, this is going to give you an output of 0 volt. Now, if we change this by the smallest possible amount that is change by 1. Then how much is the change that you are going that is uh, going to take place that should give you a resolution. So, let us calculate the output voltage corresponding to this your output voltage in that case will be equal to V r into R f upon r into all this resistance. Now, here all are 0 only one that is appearing or if we expand 0, 0 by 2, 0 by 4 this way it continues 0 by 2 to the power 6 plus only one appearing is the least significant bit. So, R f is R that means your value that is available with you is equal to V r is 5 divided by 2 to the power 7 actually I lost where I wrote down the value. So, it is coming to be 0 3 9 1 volt. So, this is the resolution that means uh, each of the division it is 8 bit DAC. So, 8 bit means total 256 levels it can have and each of the level corresponds to a voltage difference of 0 0.0391 volt which is a sufficiently small resolution and of as 8 bit suggests it is a quite uh, good converter. If we can extend this problem to identify the maximum output voltage that can that we can have. Now, when we can have the maximum output voltage minimum output voltage is all inputs are 1 then sorry all inputs are 0. So, we shall be getting 0 output voltage then maximum uh, output voltage you are going to get when all inputs are 1 just like this 
So, what will be the value of the corresponding output voltage? We actually know uh, the value of the R by now, but the value of R is not required. The maximum output voltage, which is the maximum that you want to calculate when all of them are set to 1. So, that will be equal to V R into R F by R into all set to 1, 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 2 to the power 7. So, again if we calculate following the same way and putting R F equal to R, then we are going to get this to be V R divided by 2 to the power 7 into inside this bracket it is 2 to the power 8 minus 1 that is 255 by 128 into V R and we know the value of V R is equal to 5 volt. So, 255 by 128 into 5 that gives us 9.9609 volt. This is the maximum output voltage that uh, that will correspond to when all inputs are set to 1. I have one final calculation here, what will be the output voltage for digital input of this particular one. Now, uh, the following the same way you can calculate, let us uh, just calculate following the same pattern here your output voltage will be again V R into R F by R into let us put the register. So, first bit B uh, for the most significant bit this is equal to 1, then it is 0 by 2, then it is uh, 1 by 2 square, then again 0 by 2 cube plus 1 by 2 to the power 4 plus 1 by 2 to the power 5, 0 by 2 to the power 6 plus 1 by 2 to the power 7. And once you put all these numbers, then it you are going to get hmm, 6.7578 volt as the final answer. So, corresponding to any uh, digital input within this 8 bit range, you can calculate the output voltage just following this sample calculation. So, this is a quite good example about how to deal with a binary weighted register network or ladder network for conversion of a digital input to corresponding binary output. I hope you have understood this, similar problems will be given in the assignments also and I am sure you will be able to solve it. But let us quickly check the other kind of converter that we can have. As you have mentioned, there are so many number of registers available here, so it quite often uh, may become difficult to deal with particularly when we are having large, uh, large bit or we are trying to talk about a high resolution converter. Like this is the, uh, this particular example corresponds to 8 bit and that is more or less the practical limit of operation for such registers. We hardly will find a binary weighted register of using of uh, 10 or 12 bit. So, the next one that we have is called R to R ladder network. So, in this case here each of your uh, bits here your switching setup is quite similar, but we have an additional register for each bit. Like if you see each of these uh, bits, this is the most significant bit, this is connected with a register of 2 R. Uh, so, all bit pass through this resistance of 2 R and then in between these two connection there is this register R, this additional register. Similarly, if you focus to any one of them like if we check about this particular bit, this is the register 2 R and either side of this connection you have this R register. So, the least significant the bit more register the signal has to pass through because like when you are talking about the most significant bit, uh, it will only while going through the comparator it will only goes, go through this means it encounters only this resistance this 2 R and another 2 R. Whereas, if we come to the least significant bit that will pass through this 2 R and then this entire series of R networks or R register it has to pass through. So, the lower the significance of the bit more number of register the signal has to pass through to reach the comparator. Here current is divided by a factor of 2 at each node uh, following the Thevenin's theorem. Accordingly, we get this particular expression of the uh, voltage output which we can combine. Here this uh, in like in the previous case of binary weighted register, here we had B n minus 1 by 2 to the power 0 and this one was 2 to the power n minus 1. 
However, there is an additional two factors coming in the denominator here, uh, giving this the final expression where we have an additional 2 in the denominator. But how we got this expression probably it will be easier if we discuss with a smaller example. Let us take this circuit where we have just 4 uh, bits, this is the most significant one, this is the least significant one. So, uh, we have to keep on reducing the circuit to smaller case, this circuit can be thought to be equivalent to this where all this S0, S1, S2 and S3 refers to the uh, occup, uh, refers to the value of the concerned bit like S0 refers to the value 0 or 1 which occupies the least significant bit similarly S3 corresponds to the most significant one. And we have to uh, reduce, we can reduce this circuit to a much lesser one to calculate the final output resistance value. Like if we think about this way, uh, all the inputs are 0. Let us say all these S values are 0, then this is perfectly grounded each of them. Let us take first this portion, there you can clearly see there are 2 values of 2 or resistors in parallel. Then what is the corresponding equivalent resistor? Corresponding equivalent resistor will be R only because you know their equivalent resistance uh, sorry the equivalence of this 2 2 or resistor will be 2 R into 2 R divided by 2 R plus 2 R. So, that leaves you 2 R divided by 2 that is equal to R. Uh, so, this is this R that we are getting and this is following Thevenin's theory now we can reduce it further. So, if we now think about this particular block, In this block what we have? We have uh, one R here, another R here, two reg R register in series, another two R register in parallel. So, if we reduce this this again will reduce to another R register like this. Now, we take this part, again we have one R, another R register in series. So, the net of this two is two R and that is another two R in parallel. So, combining them we get R. Finally, what is the equivalent resistance of this? So, R plus R in series two R and parallel to this is two R. So, another R. We have this entire circuit comes to be or uh, comes to have an equivalent resistance of R only. This is the biggest advantage of this R to R ladder network means uh, whatever may be the number of bits that you are dealing with the output resistance is always equal to R. We are using just two resistor levels R and 2 R and they are uh, oriented such that, that their combination gives you a net output voltage of sorry net output resistance only of R. Let us take the example, an example where your S naught or B naught now let us stick to our notation of B naught. So, your B naught is equal to 1, all other Bs that is B 1, B 2 and B 3 they all are set to 0. So, the situation is somewhat like this, uh, these all are grounded and but this one is having this V R the reference register. This um, can be now we can reduce this say we take this particular portion, there are two 2 R registers. So, if we combine them, their equivalent becomes R and this voltage gets divided by V R by 2. Now, we take this particular circuit, we reduce that, the voltage becomes V R by 4 and the equivalent resistance is R. Now, we take this particular circuit, this is just simple application of the Thevenin's theorem and circuit theory. So, again it becomes V R by 8, in each step the voltage gets divided by uh, 2, by a factor of 2. Whenever we are moving from one node to the next one, the voltage keeps getting divided by a factor of 2 and in all cases the equivalent resistor is coming to be R. Like here also the voltage is V R by 8, resistor is R. Now this is the only circuit that is left with us. So again the equivalent resistor will become R and the voltage will become V R by 16. So corresponding Thevenin voltage we are getting as V R by 16. That means when you are dealing with an input of 0, 0, 0, 1 it is like this or instead of writing this so you can think about uh, the any one appearing the least significant bit will contribute VR by 16 amount of voltage. Similarly, uh, if we set say B1 equal to 1 and el everything else to be 0, then this circuit does not come into picture and actually you will be having this VR voltage appearing here. So, if we calculate that its contribution will be uh, it is like here it passed through the voltage passed through 4 nodes. So, we got V R by 2 to the power 4 or we write it as V R by 2 to the power 4, but here it will be V R by 2 cube. Similarly, uh, when we have when we have 
b2 equal to 1 and others are set to 0, then that will contribute vr by 2 square and when the most significant bit is set to 1, everything else to 0, then that will contribute vr by 2 to the power 1. That means, uh, or that way we can calculate the voltage contributed by each of the bits. And now depending on which of the bits are available and which are not, we can always uh, keep on adding them or subtracting, or sorry, we can always keep on adding them to get the final output voltage. So, like when we have an input say 0, 1, 1, 0, then what will be your out voltage? Then the most significant bit is not there, the next one is 1. So, the B2 is 1, so it will contribute Vr by 2 square, B3 is 1, that will contribute Vr by 2 2 cube least significant is 0, so that will not contribute anything. So, this way we can get the final output voltage and this is the expression. So, B3 contributes B3 by 2, uh, B2 contributes B2 by 4, B1 by 8 and least significant contributes B0 by 16 and now uh, multiplying with the RF we get the final output voltage from this. This is an example of dealing with here we are dealing with talking about a 2 bit register this is the least significant bit this is the most significant bit uh, and your input uh, digital input is 101 that is the both both most significant and least significant bits are set to 1 and the intermediate one is 0. The reference voltage is 10 volt your R is given to be 2 ohm and RF is set to be 2 R. Then how can we calculate the value of this current first? So, we have to calculate the final output voltage. Let us calculate the output current first. Your I naught, the current will be equal to minus of this V ref divided by the equivalent resistance. How much is the equivalent resistance? We have this 2R associated with this in series and this 2R, this 2R is in parallel to that. So, 2R parallel 2R. So, that means we have uh, minus V ref divided by 3 R. Now, V ref is set to be 10 volt divided by 3 into 2 this is 6. So, minus 1.67 milli ampere or I should say not milli ampere 1.67 ampere. So, how much is the current that is coming to this op amp? that current I not reaching the op amp then can be written as this I not into the contribution coming from the most significant bit is 1 by 2 from the next one is 0 by 2 or sorry 0 by 2 square and from the least significant bit is 1 by 2 cube that is I not into half plus 1 by 8. So, 5 by 8 in times the I naught. So, 5 by 8 times 1.67 minus 1.04 ampere. Then final output voltage will be I naught of this op amp into R f that is 1.04 minus of that into R f is how much? 2 R into 2. So, that is something like 4.17 volt. So, this way we can calculate the output voltage that we are getting from this resistance network. It is a much more complicated structure compared to the uh, binary weighted resistor circuit that we have discussed, but it has much higher, much bigger advantages once we have control over this. The biggest advantage is there are only two register values to consider R and 2R, whereas in case of the binary weighted register we have to consider a very large range of resistance to deal with. Actual value of R is of less importance unless very high values are employed here, easy to manufacture and implement. However, it is much smaller speed compared to the binary weighted value which is having some kind of parallel processing and so very quick to give the final output and much complicated to analyze this particular system you need to have proper idea about circuit theory to do this. But still because of such uh, 
simplified final representation only and re requirement of only two resistance values. So, this is probably more popular one when you are looking for very precise measurement and particularly when you are looking for larger bit of measurement, larger resolution. However, when you are looking for uh, somewhat uh, restricted resolution up to 6 bit or 8 bit, then the binary weighted one is more preferred simply because of its simplicity. That takes us to the end of our week number 3. Here we have talked about the application of digital techniques in measurement. So, we started with defining the significance of digital analysis, storage and transmission over corresponding analog counterpart. Then we talked about the number systems, conversion from one system to the other, particularly conversion from decimal to others and from other system to decimal. And from there we established how why binary is so important compared to the other systems. Then we talked about the binary logic gates, their combinations to give different kind of uh, conversion of binary digits. Then we talked about the decimal to BCD and gray encoders. We have talked about alphanumeric codes in detail, particularly the ASCII character sets, the Unicode systems and also a bit on the barcodes. Then we have talked about the analog to digital converters out of which successive approximation and flash ADCs are generally the most popular one from modern technology point of view. But sigma delta it is quite complicated but can be much more accurate. And uh, today we have discussed about this digital to analog converters where we have discussed only two configurations the binary weighted one and also the R2 or ladder networks. So, please uh, revise all these lectures properly. If you have any query please uh, write to me. I would request you to refer to books or maybe over internet because you will get lots of different kinds of uh, discussions regarding each of these topics. Uh, this course being focused more on mechanical measurement, so intricate details of electronics is not required, but at least the topics such as the number systems, how to combine the logic gates, what are the working principles of each of these converters, if you have understood that, that is sufficient. So, that takes me to the end of this particular week. It was actually quite exciting week for me because we talked about something which is uh, quite out of scope for, for a mechanical engineer. But uh, being uh, as we are living in a digital world, I felt it is extremely important to have some idea about how to convert a normal analog input to digital and how to get it back to the analog form and that is why we have discussed in detail in this week. I hope you have enjoyed it. Please do the assignments again uh, assign and I repeat if you have any query please write to us immediately. So, I will try to be shorting that out as soon as possible. So, next week we shall be talking about the processing of the outputs. So, till then bye, I am signing off for this week. So, take care.